Um, yes. So I did have a keynote where I introduced the benefits of uh, information models for the energy transition. And in uh, this session, I'm going to bring two stories to you about the uh, practical usage of uh, information models in, in, uh, out there in, in live assets. So first, we will look at the benefits of large-scale deployment of OPC UA with solar PV information models across 36 solar plants with Skatec. And then uh, after this, towards the end of the session, I will talk about the world's largest offshore wind farm and the work to create an OPC UA information model there together with Equinor. Now, first with Skatec. So Skatec is a company that has a business model to develop, build, own, and operate renewable power plants across multiple technologies. So they started with solar, but later has also acquired wind and hydro assets and put that into the general portfolios. They currently have 3.5 gigawatts in operations and under construction, and they have additional air plants and a pipeline to build additional 14.8 gigawatts within the next few years. So this company has more than 600 employees and uh, uh, in about 26 countries. So this is a truly global company. Uh, they have this asset here that I introduced in the keynote, Ben Bon, the world's largest solar park when built. Uh, it's in the Egyptian desert, capacity of 1.8 gigawatts. Um, I believe Skaltec operates about 400 megawatts of those. Uh, it's visible from the outer space. But Skatec has a lot more uh, solar parks than this one uh, across the globe. Um, yeah, so this is the rough structure of where they're located um, uh, in various geographies. So you can see all the way from uh, South, uh, South America over to Vietnam and Burma. Now, all of these uh, solar parks and assets is organized into one coherent big enterprise architecture. So this architecture has uh, data capture and it has uh, a system delivered by us in Predictor that we call Predictor Map Gateways that takes all the captured data and reorganizes them into an information model before provisioning the data further to a centralized system, but we also have a setup uh, that guides the central organization uh, where the data and, and, and lets them operate all those assets remotely. But first, look, let's look, take a, uh, uh, again a look at what I mean with an information model. Uh, here, so we have a typical site in solar PV has a set of uh, equipment types that will be defined in most solar parks and in an information model you can define those types and you can organize them into a structure that have the right interconnections etc so that you uh, from one equipment can navigate to the other ones etc so this is what uh, we have made uh, for Skatec an information model that is being used then across all those 36 sites um, so the numbers in 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 this uh, enterprise is that they have 36 solar parks. The, there's about 2,000 point-to-point -point connections for equipment communication across this enterprise. So that's quite a lot. Assuring data quality is quite a challenge with so many point-to-point -point connections because, as you know, uh, if you don't get the data in, the quality of the data will be bad, and then the usage of the data uh, will be ruined. So it's important to keep all of those data streams running at all times. There are several uh, protocols out there towards the equipment, and uh, our system is communicating with all of those, capturing into this central gateway before reorganizing the data and pushing it for, forward to the enterprise. And then at the enterprise side, uh, a total of uh, 1.75 million signals are coming in, in real time. So you have the real time values, you have the time series, and you have the alarms and events associated with those. So that's an extensive and very large set of uh, signals. Uh, and uh, uh, here comes in the evident benefit of having a standardized context to, to organize all those signals into one coherent information structure. Um, 
Yes. So the, the usage of this architecture in the skate organization can be described like this. So they have in South Africa, Cape Town, a global control and monitoring center. So they use this centralized portfolio asset management system and they can take on more and more tasks from uh, the, the local site so that uh, Skater can reduce the cost out there on the site and uh, leave the site uh, basically to do the rudimentary maintenance tasks when needed. Uh, then there's also an analyst organization in Oslo with Scaltec uh, centralized that uses a lot of artificial intelligence tools. We have uh, a tool that we call Data Engineering Suite, where you can actually do queries from Python into an OPC UA model and take up the data directly from the OPC UA endpoint in order to do the analysis. So all data available to the analysts immediately in a rich and structured information model. And they use their favorite tools to do whatever calculations they need. And the result of that is that they will give best practice advices to the central operating center. And they will also create new algorithms based on AR and ML that will be uh, embedded into as new functionality in the central portfolio asset management system. So all in all, this is a fundamental strategic layer for Skatec that um, uh, gives them uh, unique opportunities to further develop and enhance their operations across all sites and onboard new technologies as they come. So Skate is actively using this in, uh, in their research activities. And uh, I've arranged so that we can, we can look at, uh, at a video footage that tells about how this system is used in a concrete research project. So, Tim, could you please run my presentation now uh, or the video that I sent in? Solar energy is growing immensely fast, and it is one of the few technologies that's actually on track. Still, I mean, operations maintenance is one of the key challenges to keep that going. We need to make sure these assets have a 20, 30, maybe 40 year lifetime. Skartec, Equinor, Predictor and IFE have since 2018 collaborated on the research project Solutions and Strategies for Operation and Maintenance of Utility-Scale Solar Power Plants. The project is funded by the Research Council of Norway through the Energix programme and aims to utilise the data collected from large-scale power plants to increase production and reduce maintenance costs. The challenge is for anyone to be competitive, they have to find an edge. So we actually need the kind of systems that we're developing in this project for that entire industry to thrive. The competition is getting much stronger every year. The, the prices are dropping, so it's about finding a way to optimize our plant efficiency and reducing the cost by analyzing and using the data that we have available from our plants. The project brings together Skartec, a leading global renewable energy developer and operator, Equinor, an energy giant with extensive operations and maintenance experience from the energy industry on a very large scale, Predictor, a pioneering SCADA and asset management software developer for the renewable industry, and IFE, the leading Norwegian research group on PV technology. Each solar plant generates thousands of data points, which are streamed to a Global Control and Monitoring Centre, or CMC, in Cape Town, which monitors events and ensures appropriate data quality. A team of analysts based in Oslo then work on developing new methods for data filtering and production loss detection. These methods are then used to develop actionable insights at the Control and Monitoring Centre, which in turn improves production at the site. 100 megawatt is just an abstract number. You have no idea what it really means until you, you actually see it and you see what a large area it covers. There are so many data points that are being measured uh, every second, hundreds and thousands, if not millions of data points. We are managing to automate this process. Let the, the machines crunch the, the data and provide high level decision support uh, uh, tasks to the operators. 
combining advanced data analytics with field operations, the project has developed a novel method for analyzing production losses from soiling caused by dust and dirt on the solar panels, which enables the plant operator to understand in detail which revenue losses are occurring in different parts of the plant and to plan cleaning operations accordingly. The project has also developed a method that quantifies the production losses from faults in the solar panels, which have been detected by use of drone-based thermography, and which enables the operator to easily assess which modules are causing the most significant production losses, and hence should be replaced by new panels. So we have a, a very sort of direct result, a direct benefit from it uh, in terms of or how we do operations and maintenance uh, on our plants. So in terms of specific results from this project that I believe is valuable, I would highlight the type of algorithms that makes us understand where the losses are. Specifically, I would highlight the work that we have done in terms of understanding the effect of, uh, of soiling, and not only the physical effects, but also the effects on the revenue and the financial impact. One of the main takeaways of this project is the importance of data quality. We have been able to lay a fundamental layer in our, in our systems that will enable us to extract data and analyze data and present solutions to the operators. It's a competitive advantage for us going forward. And we, we need companies to succeed because this is going to be the biggest thing around. So um, I guess this is a solid uh, confirmation that OPC UA with standardized information model is, um, is a strategic benefit for um, industrial asset owners that would like to build out uh, assets at scale and utilize data across their assets to become more and more efficient in their operations. Um, okay, so that was the story about skate tech um, and their usage. So next is the story with uh, Equinor. So Equinor uh, is an international energy company committed to long-term value creation in a low carbon future. So the purpose of Equinor is to turn natural resources into energy for people and progress for society. So they come from oil and gas and have around 2 million barrels of oil in production every day. Uh, but they are moving uh, quite quickly and swiftly into renewables. And today they power about 1 million European homes with renewable energy. The company has about 21,000 employees in, in 30 countries. And as I introduced in the keynote, uh, uh, the, they have an interest in renewable assets, the, the doggy bank. And this is the world's largest offshore wind farm and the construction. So it's located in the North Sea, 3.6 gigawatts, and will power 5 million UK homes with their electricity demand when it's finalized. A total of 277 wind turbines is out there, east size of the Eiffel Tower. And the area it covers is about 40 by 40 kilometers, about the size of Greater London. So it's a very impressive uh, industrial asset. But um, it's a bit hard to, for me to call it a success story yet. And I guess when we come there, Equinor will tell about this themselves uh, because the project is not going to be completed before uh, 2026. Uh, uh, so in this session, I will look at two elements. I will, look, I will uh, talk about the planned architecture uh, using OPC UA extensively, and then also the activities we've been doing with Equinor to develop uh, a wind information model. So, first of all, the architecture. So, Doggy Bank uh, has a, a set of different uh, scalar systems um, and other types of plant systems that will provide information to an over uh, to a, a yet an, a, yet again our predictor map gateway, a, a system that can consume a range of protocols, including OPCU, and reorganize the data and put it into a standardized information model. So the Dogger Bank is structured in three sites, Dogger Bank A, B, and C. And uh, all of those will provide data to that gateway, and that gate will then provide a single endpoint with one unified and defined information model to 
the base field asset management system, uh, Equinos Omnia Cloud, and other Equinos Enterprise applications. Three subsites, uh, about seven different plant systems we consume data from in each subsite. Um, so there's uh, about 150,000 signals in each subsite. Uh, um, the, the frequency of some of them is pretty high, about 25 hertz. So in general, it's like 240,000 samples per second. Um, and uh, it's both time series, free time analysis, et cetera, exposed to this and a standardized information model. So, so this information model um, that is here has been developed by Predictor and Equinor in collaboration. It's been uh, uh, based on IC standards and, and definitions we find there, and then mapped onto OPC UI concepts. There's also an ambition to bring in uh, structures from the IEC 81346 uh, standard uh, as a um, future extension to the information model. So, uh, a bit about the OPC information model being built and what to talk about now is why create an information model in a project at all? And why do we do that, uh, etc. And how to go about to do the job, which principles uh, was used and what were the steps and actually how did the process of taking out this information model actually happen? Now, uh, the, the Dogger Bank uh, project is a nine billion British pounds, UK pounds investment. So this is a large, large project, uh, uh, separated into various project phases. And uh, the project phases right now is that all IT information structure, etc., is being set up and, and planned to be integrated with each other. So this phase cannot wait for a consortia or work groups to conclude on information model work. So uh, the, the situation where there was no uh, existing wind information model for OPC UA uh, resulted in the Equinor had to initiate activities to do this uh, in the project. Um, but the, the builders of this information model and predictor and Equinor plans to donate the result of the work to understand the script. I would like to use it later. Uh, there's some benefits, though, of using or, or defining and crafting an information model in a project. Uh, so the assumptions are on you do when you create the types, etc., uh, they are tested immediately. And you go into quite uh, tight loops in iterations of, uh, of developing the model. Um, you can check out under that source data streams that is not properly represented in the model, or you can check out the usability of the model for applications that will consume the model. So we, we used a set of principles uh, when creating this information model and base it on the other IEC standards. So I'm, I'm not going to go into each detail of the principles, the ones is first, you can, you can read them out, but basically it is that um, uh, we, need, we should uh, prioritize to, to map it to pre-existing OPC UA concepts as opposed to trying to represent uh, the other standards directly in, uh, I would say, non-natural OPC UA ways. Uh, so that's kind of like the principles used, try to figure out which is the best OPC UA concepts and then map them to those. And the steps. So step one is to map the underlying concepts. Um, often there's a conflict between the underlying standard, like in IEC 61400, they have their own concept for units of measure, ranges, timestamps, etc. So again, using the principle that the OPC UA concept should prevail and, and define a map to those. Next one, which we did the, the initial work of doing that, uh, is to create uh, some diagrams. We use the OPC UA wish of templates and this facilitates easy communication around the model with domain experts, et cetera. So it's important now to get all the domain experts and their comments into this, et cetera, and also the application, uh, the, the client application they could use and kind of like confirm that this looks uh, good. Third step is to take the model and implement the node set XML file and be using the UM, excellent UA model from Unified Automation. Uh, and then 
uh, often we also see that with an extensive model, it can be efficient to build a model used in, uh, based on scripts and tabular data. Then the important steps is then step four and five, try to map the model towards existing sources. So when we tried to do this, we discovered that uh, the chosen uh, general electric turbines in the dog bag and other equipment exposed far more data than was already part of the IEC 61400. Hence, the, we, we, we saw that the model should be possible to extend with potential project-specific extensions, but they then should inherit from well-defined uh, types in, in the information model or, or the usage of OPC interfaces to actually solve this. And then test the model with relevant consumers, the client applications. <coughs> so our experience is that uh, many of the client applications often don't uh, support or have um, the, the latest OPC concepts uh, available, like OPC interfaces. So we considered to use the aforementioned OPC aliasing that we heard about earlier today, and also OPC dictionary references. The risk of using this is that clients won't be able to utilize those in the client applications. And then after the experience with both sources and consumptions, we rework the model uh, based on these experiences and run a couple of more iterations of doing this. And eventually after a few iterations, uh, we believe that the model is ready to be tested and commissioned to the plant. Now, since Doggy Bank is still a few years ahead before it's going live and operated, we've been fortunate to be able to test and implement the model now in a new wind farm project that uh, escaped the cast. So uh, the information model that was created for the Doggy Bank offshore wind farm has now proven its relevance uh, with uh, a land-based wind farm in Vietnam in the escape portfolio. And again, all this data then comes into the, the central organizations in Cape Town and Oslo for them to be able to, to look at these data besides the solar PV plant data and do the same analysis, et cetera, they can do in order to support uh, the, the local organization of doing proper operations. Okay, so these were the stories. Um, we have uh, Quite long experience now in predictor using OPC uh, information models at scale. The first was Johan Sverdrup. That was a success story here uh, last year. We started with that in 2016. And now we have clients that use OPC UA and information model at scale, also in renewables besides the oil and gas uh, assets that was uh, told about in the last success story. So thank you. That was uh, all from me today.